How are you entrepreneurs? Today I have Andy. Uh, she is the owner and president of Prep for College. It is an independent college admissions counselor. Yeah, I mean, I make a joke about it that I've never heard of that before this, but it's it's actually great. She has a lot of insight. She was a, a teacher for a long period of time. People come in asking her for help, for guidance, getting to that next level. She learned how to do it, got certified, and kind of just followed that path to, to helping people out and help people get to where they want to get to. Please subscribe, please share, and tell your friends. Welcome to the road to growth, success of an entrepreneur. We've raised the bar. Learn firsthand from successful business owners and create your own path to success. I'm going to show you how great I am. It's time to hit the road to growth with team lead of the Enriquez Group, Realtor Vinny. All right, so we are here with, with Andy. You are the owner, president, prep for college, and independent college admissions council. I didn't even know that was a thing. I, oh, I, yes, it is. There's, there's fact, there's a lot of us in the area. It's um, We really help teenagers okay. uh, predominantly get into college. And um, if you're years out of college, I don't think you realize how difficult the process is in today's world. And so what we do is we guide our clients through the entire process in making sure that they pick the right schools so that they have good choices when the admission process is over. So when's the ideal age to start with with kids? Uh, Believe it or not, I start with several of my clients as early as ninth grade. Okay. But the majority come to me generally in 11th grade. Okay. Waiting until senior year is too late to start because you have a lot of makeup work that you have to do in a short period of time. So I do recommend that you start earlier yeah. so you avoid mistakes mm. um, in picking your high school curriculum and making sure that you're doing community service, if you're doing sports, that you're handling it properly, that your grades are staying up. All of these factors um, really make a difference in your application. And then it plays into what schools you will ultimately be accepted into. Okay, so remember from college, I went to a small private school and that was the best decision I ever made. If I went to a, probably a big public school, I, don't, I think I would have been lost in the crowd. Uh, so I remember one stat that I was told back in the day was the idea that you only remember 20% of what you learn in college. And I think that number goes up the older you are when you actually go into uh, college. Do you see a difference working with clientele that maybe is later in life or most of your, the people you work with in high school? Do they, do they come like outside of high school and they Occasionally, graduated? I do get someone who's older. Okay. But uh, I would say 99.9% .9 of my clientele are teenagers okay. looking to go directly from high school into college. college. Okay. A few of them do want to per, um, pursue a gap year. Yeah. And so if they do and their parents are on board with that, then I guide them through that process as well. Do you see a difference in your clientele that do take the gap year? Is there anything? Well, I think they mindset? they have a, another year of experience. Yeah. Um, and generally, when you do a gap year, you go on some sort of a service mission, mm -hmm. either in the United States or outside of the United States. And I think it gives you a year to grow and mature because not all teenagers are really ready yeah. for the rigors of college. Yeah. And that's where um, an independent college admission counselor comes in because we really get to know our clients well, especially when we start with them at a younger age. And by doing so, um, we guide them into where we think uh, their best fit schools are for them, whether they're super small schools, medium-sized schools, large schools, private schools, state schools. There's all sorts of schools out there. And so when I pick a list for my clients, I try to balance it between in-state, out-of-state, public and private, mm. so that there is this balance in their list, which will give them a much higher percentage of chances of getting in to the majority of the schools that they apply to, so that they have choices at the end of the process. And that's the name of the game choices 
Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a tough one where it's you only had this one school that was your only school and you don't get accepted. So what, what brought you into this field? Okay, I, my background is in education. Okay. I was raised on the East Coast, and um, I uh, graduated Temple University with a degree in elementary education. And then I went on and got a master's degree from Boston University in special education. And I taught the, the majority of my career on the East Coast in special education. And then I moved to California 15 years ago, and I started doing tutoring. And while I was tutoring, many of my clients were asking me, could I help them with the college navigation process? So it dawned on me that there might be a business here, and, but I didn't feel as if I could charge money unless I got certified. So I researched it and discovered that the UCs have a certification program. So I went to, uh, through the program at UCSD, and, which is a year program, and I was certified back in 2010. And it was at that point that I opened up my little business and I started working with students. And, um, you know, it slowly grew and I've become very successful at doing this because once your reputation gets out there, people look for you and, and, and call you. So um, that's, that's how I got into um, this. It's, it's continuing my teaching in a different manner. Now, the cert, the, that cert process, what goes into that, that year long? Because you already had the education background. I mean, what was, what goes into getting that certification? Well, it was taking a lot of courses, learning about the different colleges, learning um, from the different organizations that are out there. That's, uh, there's, there's the National Associations of Colleges, there's the Western Associations of Colleges, there's IDEA. It's learning from them about best practices, uh, really delving into uh, what is the difference between uh, early decision, early action, regular admission, rolling admission, and, and all of the little things that can definitely overwhelm a parent yeah. when they're trying to figure out what is a good school for my child. Do you venture to those schools also? Yes, we go out and we visit a lot of them. And I have gone on several trips and visited a lot of schools. Uh, I know the West Coast schools really well. I know the East Coast schools really well. Um, not, and, and I do go, well, like I have to go to um, Illinois this summer for personal reasons, so I'm going to spend a few extra days and go visit some of the campuses not that far from where I will be um, so that I, I can give a, um, a first-person report as yeah. to what I like about the school and then do you also have to keep up to date on like grants do you help out with kids with grants i do help them with scholarships grants are a little harder okay. but there are a lot of school-based scholarships that are merit-based hmm. and so i teach them what to do there are a variety of websites that are out there that you can um, find where there are college scholarships and you create an account and then you just start searching through the scholarships to find any that you might qualify for. And generally, you have to just write an essay. And the question is whether um, the people who you're competing against are better than you or not, you might get the scholarship. So, but the majority of my students do get merit aid to most of the private schools that they apply to. Uh, public schools are different. They tend not to give as much aid uh, merit aid because the tuition is lower and then you have to figure out what we call your EFC which is your uh, affected family contribution ex excuse me expected family contribution and and that's all done through the government through paperwork and the colleges use that in helping to determine how much scholarship money you may qualify for it seems, at least from the outside looking in, that the education and the knowledge base that you've accumulated was probably not the difficult part of this business for you. What what has been some of the difficulties or hurdles you've had to overcome in this line of business? For me, it was developing a business. Okay. I had been a teacher for over 25 years. And, my and I was 
very good at what I did, but my students were sent to my classroom. Yeah. So um, all of a sudden, I had to develop a clientele. So, you know, for the first two to three years, it was a little rough going. Um, and it was a lot of it was trial and error. Okay, this didn't work. Let's try something else. And then I started getting the ball rolling. And, you know, three clients, five clients, ten clients, word of mouth, your reputation spreads. I started doing newsletters, which I still do on a monthly basis. And, um, and then I started doing speaking engagements and, and going to various um, uh, situations where I can show what I do to people. And the business just mushroomed. And now my reputation is out there. I'm surprised sometimes. I always ask uh, potential clients where they found me. And there's some of their responses, are, oh, this woman who I don't know recommended you. Uh, she heard about you from someone else. Um, so obviously, when I've been in the field now, this is my 10th year, your reputation is hopefully stellar and people want to use you. Yeah, I mean... So the brochures, I mean, the pamphlets, the speaking engagements, those kind of things, being a teacher, okay, I can see the, I can see the pamphlets being put together fairly easy. Speaking engagement, agents. Speaking engagement, um, I was, it wasn't that difficult for me. Okay. Um, when I worked with special needs children, I worked with students of various ages. And for the last 12 years of my career, I worked with uh, developmentally delayed preschoolers. Mm. So they were between the ages of three and five, but developmentally they were lower than that. Okay. So in order to get their attention, you had to really act. So my staff and I, because I had a, a full complement of staff, I had an occupational therapist, a physical therapist, a speech therapist, and two full-time aides. Uh, we would create these very interactive lesson plans to get them to listen. And um, so, we would do all sorts of weird things. We would wear costumes. We would create all sorts of really interactive lessons. So speaking in front of a group um, sort of came naturally to me. And then when I had to do it for this, you know, my nerves weren't too um, uh, uh, shaky in the beginning. But I've got, obviously, I still had some learning curve and I got better at it as as time went on so it was there any other ones any moments where you're just like man i'm not getting enough business or i'm getting frustrated with this yes in my third year okay um i was still running at a loss and i was saying all right is this the right thing for mm. me um and i seriously contemplated getting my california teaching certificate and going back into the classroom wow. i had had some um family issues and I was like, okay, maybe this is what I should do. But I really didn't want to do it, but I was at that point. And um, then um, through my religious organization, I met a woman who I would consider an influencer. And she wanted me to start working with her oldest child. And from there, she just started spreading the word about me and my business took off. And I've been in the black ever since. Wow. So it took that. I mean, sometimes you look at it and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm not getting, not getting there. But it's just, you're so close to getting over that hump. Yes. And so um, I'm happy that I didn't give up. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you can only run in the black, for, uh, in the red for so long before you say enough is enough. W was there anything that was, what was the, the driving factor? What was that big why that was kind of pushing you through those, those three years of running the red? I really wanted to do this and I knew I was good at it. I mean, I did have clients and they did well. The issue for me was getting my name out there to people. Mm. My, I have adult children, so I don't have a ready-made clientele where I have students in a school district uh, who would know me because of my own children. Yeah. So, uh, and many of my competitors do. And they work their little niche. They work in Poway. They work in Escondido. And that's where they work. They get enough clients. And that's it. And I was more spread out throughout the entire county. So, um, but 
over time, um, I still have clients throughout the county and outside of the county because I do uh, the majority of my work over Zoom, which is similar to Skype. So um, I can have clients anywhere in the United States, and I do. Occasionally, I still get people from the East Coast who know me from the East Coast and want to use me, and, um, but I have a lot of clients in other parts of California. With, with all the knowledge and success you've had over the years, if you could talk to that, that younger person, that person in year three that was in the red, what kind of advice do you think you give to that person? Um, I think I would have tried to find an influencer earlier. I was really spinning my wheels and I really didn't know what I was doing. Uh, and one of the things that I found very beneficial was starting to work with a business coach. She really helped me focus in on what my goals were and how to meet my goals. And, and her suggestions were right on. And then that's when my influencer came about and then that's when the business took off. Well, so what's next? What's next for you? What's next for Andy? I am I'm gonna continue doing this. Um, I have decided that um, I am uh, going to cut my workload down a little bit because I work too hard and I want to enjoy life a little more. So um, I'm cutting my number of clients per grade level down to what I feel is a more reasonable number. Um, and I'm hoping to travel more. And I have two grandchildren now, so I w and they don't live locally. They live up in the Central Coast area. So I want to be able to see them a little more often. Uh, than I do now. You hear it first. Andy's expanding her business. <laughs> Central Coast. Uh, they've, they've tried to get me to move up there and, and start it up there. But for right now, I'm happy in San Diego. <laughs> I mean, how can you not be happy in San Diego? It's a great place. For anyone listening right now that's not in San Diego, why don't you just make the move? Do right by yourself. Anyways, so if someone has a kid that's maybe high school, junior high, uh, looking to go to college, what's the best way for them to contact you? They can look at my website, which is www.prep, the number four, collegenow.com. Or they can call me directly on my cell, 760-877-7200. And what piece of advice, let's say they're, they're hesitant to give you a call, but what piece of advice would you give a parent that, that has, has a kid, maybe it's a really young kid, maybe it's a newborn, maybe it's a two-year-old, three-year-old, and they're planning for the future. What kind of advice would you give to that person? Allow your child to do what he or she is good at, but expose them to a lot of different options so they can figure it out. And hopefully they will have multiple skills and not just focus in on one thing because if they're just athletic and they've never pursued maybe music or art i feel that their the value of the education is stilted in too much of one direction but not all kids have musical ability or art ability which is fine so they should be exposed to it and if they don't like it or they're not good at it fine but you should really Try to allow this, your, your after school classes be driven by the student and not as much by you. Well, it's, it's so funny for, for myself, and I've talked about it, I want to say in this podcast, but um, I, w I did three sports in high school and I thought I was bigger than, I mean, better than I was, right? And so then I went to college and uh, it was D3, planning to play football out there and play sports up there. Again, my ego was, was too big and the whole thing. Next thing, my, my body's aching too bad. Never played a, a single regular season game, so I quit football because I thought it was just too too good for who I was. And then I got into actually radio, got into to TV stuff. And it was something that, out of necessity, I found something new that I'd never even... I, I thought it was a, kind of like funny seeing the people back in the day, those kind of things. So it's like when you allow yourself to be open to those opportunities, you might actually find out what might connect with you. Correct. So. Yeah, so it's... What about for entrepreneurs, business owners that are looking to kind of start their, their business. Cause you started this from almost a necessity because people were coming to you for this, for this coaching, for this planning. How would you, what kind of advice would you give to business owners, entrepreneurs out there? 
Well, depending if you, if it's a passion of yours, yeah, then you you should be able to figure out how to monetize it into a business. Uh, some people, you know, just want to do it as a side gig, and then to start, and then once it reaches a point where you feel that you can quit the day job, so to speak, then you can go full time. But um, my best advice is to learn from a professional who really knows what he or she is doing. And for me, my I found a business coach was the best thing that I ever did. Because it taught me how to run a business. And I did not have a clue as a former teacher as how to do that. Do you want to tell everyone who your business coach is so if they're thinking about it? Sure. My business coach was Barbara Masonette. And she's wonderful. She's based in San Diego. And I highly recommend her if anybody needs help. And she's been on the podcast. You can you can look her up. I'm not sure which episode. But hopefully everyone listening out there got some great tidbits. If you have a child, maybe you're in high school yourself and you're looking for a coach, looking to get to college, you have a game, a game plan. You know, Andy is the coach for individuals like yourselves or individuals for, for your kids. And then once you actually graduate college... And you can get, get Barb right there. The double whammy right there. So thank you again, Andy. Hopefully all you entrepreneurs got some great information. Please subscribe, please share, and tell your friends. Thank you for listening to The Road to Growth, Success of an Entrepreneur. Please like, subscribe, and stay connected. Visit www.TheEnriquezGroup.com. Yeah, I created a website. Hope to see you again next week. The Enriquez Group, signing off.